My name is Pastor Esther Rosario, and on behalf of Woodmar United Methodist Church, I welcome you to our online worship service. Our church council met and decided that we will wait to tentatively open our building for in-person worship until September 13th. We will meet again on September 3rd to reevaluate. And in the meantime, we ask for your prayers and for your patience as we strive to do no harm and to do good. Hear these words from the psalmist as we prepare our hearts for worship. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. <clears throat> it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore.
person worship today, this would be the time I would call all of the students and teachers and staff and support staff to come forward. If you are living with students or teachers or staff or support staff, I invite you to lay hands on them as I pray this blessing. Lord, we know you hold the future and walk with us even now on this unpredictable path of the pandemic. We trust you work through the most difficult of seasons and never abandon us to navigate life's challenges alone. As we look to a new school year, we worry about the ongoing impact of COVID-19. It seems to be a time of no right answers, no clear good choices, and no comprehensive way for parents, educators, and administrators to meet the pressing needs of students, teachers, staff, and families. We do not want children to fall further behind in their learning. We do not want to put caregivers in the position of choosing between going to work or tending to their children. We do not want to endanger the health of any in our community. Already stretched resources are pushed to the limit as we attempt to reduce class sizes, expand the ways content is delivered, and seek to enact needed safety precautions. We look to you, Lord, to take, bless, and multiply our efforts to educate and nurture your children. We look to you, Lord, who gives us the peace that passes understanding hears the cries of the hurting, and promises that small amounts of faith can precipitate large, life-giving change. We look to you, loving God, for wisdom, for courage, for inspiration, for creativity. As we make difficult decisions in an unprecedented time, grant us an unshakable commitment to one another especially to the most vulnerable among us. Send your spirit to open our eyes to the new thing you are doing. Send your spirit to open our ears to the voices we need most to hear. Send your spirit to open our hearts to the profound love you have for us all so that everything we do in this time of fear, anxiety, and uncertainty reveals your compassion, kindness, and grace. Send your spirit to comfort and direct us as we humbly look to you for guidance and strength. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, Chapter 15, verses 10 through 20. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. To understand today's passage, we need to be aware of what led Jesus to call the crowd to himself. In the beginning of chapter 15, we learn that some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus to chastise him for his disciples breaking the tradition of the elders by not washing their hands before they eat. Jesus wasted no time in replying. And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition, you hypocrites? I shortened that quite a bit, but you get the idea. The Pharisees and teacher of the law were well-educated and were committed to keeping the law faithfully so much that they became the religious police. Jesus simply brought to their attention that they were most concerned with the letter of the law rather than the spirit of the law. Or, in other words, they were more concerned with keeping the law than actually living it. Now that might seem like a strange thing to say because if one is keeping the law, it makes sense that one would be living the law. But no, it's not. The difference is in the heart. We can adhere to strict rules and regulations on the outside, all the while loathing them on the inside and perhaps behaving differently when people aren't around. The Lord sees our hearts. In 1 Samuel 16, the Lord is talking to Samuel about anointing a king for Israel, and this is the story of the anointing of David. Samuel thinks that surely the firstborn is the one because he's tall and good looking. But the Lord said, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesus was able to see the heart of the Pharisees, so he did an unsolicited and unwelcomed heart check with them, and they didn't pass. Immediately after this, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. The issue is that of man-made tradition versus God's law. The Pharisees were chastising Jesus because his disciples weren't following the food regulations. And Jesus called the crowds to him so they wouldn't be swayed by such absurdities. You see, these Pharisees and scribes came from Jerusalem to Galilee to call Jesus out on these matters. The Galileans would have been starstruck by the Pharisees gracing them with their presence. We humans can tend to be gullible when in awe of someone's authority and power. And this is such an important word for us today. Friends, listen and understand what is going on around us. Do not fall for things that people in power say just because they have power and earthly authority. Please don't misunderstand me. We are to pray for those in leadership in the public square and in the church. Please, please pray. And while we're praying, we need to pay attention to what comes out of a person in their life. What words come out of their mouths? What actions are taken because of the state of their hearts? Let's ask ourselves tough questions. What constitutes true holiness? Following legalistic rules and looking good 
on the outside or showing compassion, mercy, forgiveness, and love. We must beware of those who profess one thing with their lips and behave in the opposite way. For example, if we profess to follow Jesus, then make racist slurs or cheat on our spouse or view pornography on the internet or cheat on our taxes or gossip about our neighbors or hold bitterness in our hearts or consistently tell little white lies to avoid confrontations or physically or verbally abusing our spouse or children or our Bible is collecting dust on the shelf or you fill in the blank. If we profess to follow Jesus and do not strive towards perfection, do not strive to deepen our relationship with him, then we are rejecting Jesus with the way we live. If we are simply proclaiming Christ with our lips, but not loving him with our hearts, we are guilty of having a faith that is de los dientes afuera, from the teeth out, shallow, no meaning, no heart transformation. What does God's word teach us about the heart? Proverbs 4.23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 27.19, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Psalm 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Luke 6, 45. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. These are but a few verses that teach us about the heart, and I invite all of us to explore in our Bibles this week, to look up scriptures that talk about the heart. There are many. The point is that just like it's important for us to get regular physical checkups with our medical doctors, it's important to have regular heart health checks with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Ugliness, aka sin, that wells up from our hearts and spills out through our voices results in hurtful words and possibly acts of violence. As kids, we used to chant, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that's not true. That's a flat out lie. We've all been wounded by thoughtless or hateful words. Not only do we need to have regular heart checks, we also need to pay attention to those who proclaim Christ with their lips, but not with their lives. Am I asking for us to be judgmental? No, not judgmental. I'm asking us to pay attention and be aware so we aren't thoughtlessly swayed by modern day Pharisees. The spiritual health of our hearts and the spiritual health of the hearts of those we allow to influence us affect our relationships. And God deeply cares about relationships. When Jesus was tested by a teacher of the law with the question, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, and you can say it with me, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Our faith cannot be a list of things we check off so we can pat ourselves on the back. Jesus challenges us to allow our devotion to God to affect us in the innermost parts of our being 
which wells up in a life that genuinely works toward establishing loving relationships with God and neighbor. Jesus challenges us to allow the way we live on the outside to spring forth from a heart that desires holiness above all else. Several years ago, a young family went on a vacation, BC, before COVID, and they flew to their destination. It was a long flight, and their four-year-old daughter just couldn't contain herself, and so, she would frequently unbuckle her seatbelt and get into the aisle and hop like a kangaroo. And each time her dad would scoop her up, put her back in her seat, buckle her up, sit down, and pretty soon she'd unbuckle, get in the aisle, hop around like a kangaroo, and her dad would scoop her up, put her back in her seat. And finally, the dad scooped her up, and put her in the window seat, buckled her up, sat next to her so she couldn't escape. And within a few minutes, the dad noticed that his daughter was sitting there like this. He asked, what are you doing? And she replied, I might be sitting on the outside, but I'm jumping on the inside. Friends, how is it with your spiritual heart health? John Wesley would have asked, how is it with your soul? The little girl in the story was living on the outside what was welling up from within. Even being restrained, she could not contain the joy that welled up from inside her. May our hearts overflow be unrestrainable with good, with love for God and our neighbor. Amen. Oh,
Let us pray. O loving God, hear us as together we offer up to you our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. I invite you to lift up your prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, as together we pray for the people of our congregation. For healing, we lift up to you Ellen, Becky, Jane, Lynn, Bill, Karen, Judy, Betty, Little Peyton, Jackie, Jeff, Geraldine, Phyllis, George, Brian, Dawn, Dan, Teresa, Joe, Nikki and the little baby who grows within her, Bonnie, baby Benjamin and his mama Jen, a friend who has serious health concerns and is going through chemotherapy, Anita, Shirley, Jeanette, Joseph, Nancy, Mary, Irene, Donna. We pray for peace for Joseph and Jackson. And I invite you to lift up those the Lord brings to your mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, as together we pray for the concerns of our hearts, for our local communities, our nation, and our world. Lord, we lift up to you those related to our church family who are on the front lines caring for people during this pandemic. Rebecca and Jeff Orange, Jenna Orange, Sandy Arndt, Lori Jones, Debbie Pirtle, Shannon Brambert, Grecia Gonzalez, Jennifer Link, Beverly S., Brett, Holly, Sarah, and Becky Bach, Jordan Delgadillo, Kathy and Chet Casper, Tracy Anderson, Amanda Anderson, Sarah Gustalisi, Ashley, Jessica, Amy, Jamie, <clears throat> Cheryl, Danielle Romero, Bria Mangerson, Monty Hoover, Danny Shambaugh, Bailey Smith, Daniel Moore, Lauren Roach, Sarah Fott, Claudia Craig, Camille Jankosik, Rachel Washburn, Kara Stilwell, Peggy Eiler, Joellen Clute, Emma, and Mark Marenko. <clears throat> We continue to pray for the city of Beirut, for comfort, for peace, for healing and restoration. And I invite you to lift up the concerns of your hearts for our local communities, our nation, and our world.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that you hear the prayers that we speak out loud and the prayers that we hold so quietly in our hearts. Help us to trust you and to lean into you and to lean into each other during these troubling times. We are thankful, God, that you call us your own, that we are your beloved children. Hear us now as we, your children, pray the prayer of Jesus' heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to make a difference in the world. Yes, that is who we are. And may our hearts overflow, be unrestrainable with good, with love for God and our neighbor. And may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all today and remain with us forever. Amen.